I think there's this myth that college students need to know exactly what they wanna do when they graduate. And I think that's something that we need to dispel. I think that the focus needs to be on how much valuable experience have you had over the course of your undergraduate career and where you're going after your undergraduate career, is that going to continue to give you value added experience so that you can further figure out what you wanna do. Originally in high school, I got really involved in student council. So people would always tell me I'd be natural lawyer, politician. So I figured, all right, that's something I could potentially do. I believe that if you really are gonna start pursuing something as a career, it needs to be something that you're passionate about and something that really kind of motivates you and it ignites some kind of fire in you. Unfortunately, law didn't do that for me, but I still wanted something that was gonna challenge me and give me something, a lot of potential later on in life. So then I happened to find the business school. And speaking from experience, especially if you are first year or sophomore, really kind of go after what is interesting to you because that's exactly how I found out I really wasn't cut out for law. Well, I switched my major several times during my undergraduate career, and for a while I was a music major in a conservatory studying vocal performance. And, you know, it, it didn't work out, ultimately because I, I realized I didn't want to actually be a singer. It's kind of funny thinking back on it now, why would I have gotten into a conservatory if I didn't ever see myself being a professional singer, but because I loved it and because that's what I always did. And I think that that's important, but it turns out I didn't actually want to do it. And on some level, I loved it so much that studying it formally and being graded on it almost ruined it for me. So when I was making that switch out of music, I thought, what do I love to do? What could I see myself, myself doing professionally? And it was student life, because when I was an undergrad, I was very involved with our student life, residence life, and housing, leadership programs, and I thought that's what I love to spend my time doing. I started pursuing those options, graduated, moved to the University of Arizona to do a master's in higher ed, and everything fell into place from there. Coming to the university, I had no idea what I was gonna do because in high school, all I knew is that I loved public speaking, and I knew that I loved engaging with the community at my small high school. I declared a major in psychology because my mom inspired me to pursue a degree in psychology. I knew that psychology wasn't really what I was interested in. Eventually, by talking to my classmates and peers, I'd ask them, you know, how do you find your advisor? And then that's how I began to navigate, which led me to uh, the communications department. I just knew I wanted to to motivate people. I knew that I wanted to communicate to people and to reach out to Native American communities and underserved communities. And that's why I pursued, pursued a degree in communications. Junior year of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was ranging from teacher to lawyer to doctor, just because those were the things I was familiar with from TV and people that I knew. But I was very lucky to talk to a recruiter from an aeronautical university, and he suggested aerospace engineering just because he asked me if I liked math, and I loved math, I still love math. And he asked me if I liked airplanes, and I always thought airplanes were cool, but I never really thought I would be working on airplanes until I learned about aerospace engineering. Well, I studied economics. And I didn't know I wanted to study economics till about a year into school. I thought I was gonna come here as a biology major and I had dreams and aspirations of becoming an orthopedic surgeon. After about six weeks of chemistry, that kind of weeded me out. And I decided that business might be good, so I did general business for a spell. And then I found economics to be something that really resonated with me. My dream was to write for GQ magazine because uh, I enjoy writing. So that's what I wanted to do I thought for the rest of my life, but then I decided that I wanted to teach. So still that passion for English, but taking a bit of a different route. Now being a teacher, I think I've finally settled on what it is I want to do because I love English, but also um, feel like I'm making a difference or at least trying to make a difference for kids in our community. I applied after three years of being an undergraduate and got accepted into pharmacy school. When I was accepted, I felt like I was set and I continued through the pharmacy curriculum and I started to actually see what the real world was for pharmacy and for healthcare. And I think, you know, it's still a great career. You know, you help a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. At the same time though, I didn't really quite know, you know, the negative downsides of it. So I started to learn this over time and that really kind of hit me. It wasn't like a, a light bulb went off in my head and I thought, what am I doing? It was more of a whisper. It was kind of like, why am I doing this? 
what am I doing? But two months before I graduated, we were on a long drive and I just listened to the whisper and I said out loud, I don't wanna do pharmacy when I graduate. I have a pharmacist job lined up. I have a great salary lined up. I know exactly what I wanna do and yet I don't wanna do it. So it was definitely the hardest thing for me to admit that I didn't want to do what I was set to do. You know, what motivated me 10 years ago is way different than what motivates me today.